Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 249. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. Now, I'm actually not surprised it took this long for a super dig to occur, but it's something I've had planned ever since the start of the series, where if five people select the same dig, like five or more people, then it gets pushed to the front and prioritized over everything. So, we have a five-person team dig, because five people have decided to dig up DOS Games backslash Adventure backslash Crush 31. Those five people are Saint of Streets, Retro Swim, The Great Code Holio, Adam Aroli, and Happy Kitty. So either everyone knows something about this that I don't, or we're about to be in for a serious disappointment. But in any case, got a bunch of Crusher files, some OV files, whatever those are, executable, doc, um, registration doc and a file id.diz. So let's start off by typing out the diz file. So Crusher is an adventure, arcade, and strategy game all in one. Explore 25 different rooms, searching for different objectives, avoid monsters, grab oxygen, blast through walls, rescue beautiful women, and more. <laughs> Crusher is fun for the entire family. No two games are ever the same. Why do I feel like we've played something like this before? Um, well, actually, no, wait, let's do the... Um, Edit the doc file and see what we got here. Oh yeah, Solo Software presents Crusher 3.1. I gotta f like, haven't we seen something like this? I mean, that's that's the thing with Solo Software games is that some of them had multiple revisions, and then each revision is different enough that it's still like it's still different enough that it's worth looking at. <laughs> so it's like. It makes it really tough to figure out like what we've actually covered and what we haven't in terms of solo software. And yeah, just looking at this sort of storyline here, like these objectives, this seems like it's a more advanced version of whatever we've seen prior that has the same gameplay. So, like, I mean, one way or another, we're going to have something slightly different at least, so I guess we might as well look at it. Oh, and it turns out the registration fee is $12, which, you know, par for the course for solo software. So... Let's actually run this. So, Crusher. So, we got our Solo Software logo. And welcome to Crusher version 3.1. Yeah, we've definitely seen something like this before, but yeah, this is... Yeah, we've definitely seen this before, but at the same time, it's like, how do we know how similar this is to the things that we've already seen, right? Like, already, like, this feels slightly different. Because, like, the enemies seem to be moving in, like, almost like some kind of pattern or something. Also, the enemies seem to be a little smarter than I was, than I was expecting. So I guess we should just actually try to survive here. <laughs> um, do we actually have a help screen at all? We do not, so I don't know what my um, controls are. Like, I mean, it says I have bombs, but the keys it's saying are like map, sound, and scores. So I don't know how to use a bomb. Oh, spacebar. Okay. So yeah, like, I'm s very sure that we've actually played a game like this before. In fact, I'm sure we've played like one or two games like this before because, as a, again, slow software, you, so many different things have been redone, reversioned, and stuff. So the fact that a version 3.1 existed, as well as a version probably 2 or something, as well as a version 1, like, that's what I'm getting at here is that we've probably seen different versions of this before. So I'm not entirely certain what we're doing here. For the moment, I'm just kind of trying to survive. Whoa! Because, yeah, the enemies are moving, like, multiple steps at a time now, which is kind of worrying, because <laughs> it means i got to stay really far away from them so that I don't get hit or anything. Okay, I ran out of bombs, so this might be bad. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, this is bad. So another game, sure. Let's see if we can actually do better this time. Oh, that's weird. It actually goes back to the title screen when you say you want to play it again. 
So I want to try to minimize the amount of um, bombs and stuff that I use. And also need to keep the oxygen up as well. And hopefully we can see if we can spot any kind of differences here, but... I'm starting to doubt that we're going to see any major differences compared to previous versions of this game we've seen. Uh, what? <laughs> um... Okay... Uh... Well, there's a lot of dynamite in there, like bombs that I could get, but also a massive number of enemies to dodge. And I would need to use so many bombs to get... Wait, what? Huh. So apparently some of these are fake walls? Interesting. Not the yellow ones, though. And the enemies can't move through the fake walls, it doesn't look like. Okay, I'd like to get those last two pieces of dynamite, but... It might be a little tricky. Okay, got him. Whoops. And I died. <laughs> oh, it started me up there, though. That's kind of where I wanted to go, I think. No, actually, I wanted to go to the side. Uh, you know what? That's fine. We'll just go up. Okay, so that was definitely different, because I don't remember seeing a room like that in previous games like this one. Okay, so I'm actually noticing that the color of the enemy sort of determines how many moves they get to make per cycle. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, you can actually push some of these, too. I forgot about that. Yeah, so I can just push some of them out of the way if they're... Oh, wait a minute. I seem to re remember that that's also how you actually destroy enemies, too, is you kind of surround them, and then that kind of converts them into stuff. I have to check to see if that's the case or not. Okay, that did actually work. It killed the enemy and it made some oxygen spawn. Okay. So yeah, there do appear to be a few differences. Like, very minor differences. But... This does seem to be playing pretty much like how I remember this playing. So whatever differences there are, they're very minor. Like, I mean, it seemed like there were more characters that you had to rescue. Like, there was more to the story, as they called it, but... It seemed to be about the gist of it. Yeah, this is kind of weird. This room here has, like, um... A symmetrical sort of thing going on with the impassable blocks. Wait... Can I actually blast into through the really solid walls? Oh, I can. Okay, so the gray ones are completely impushable, but you can still blast through them. Okay, that's that's good to know. Okay, it appears that these green ones, even though they're slow, they do track you to some degree. But that just means you can manipulate them into going where you want them to. Yeah, so far I haven't really found any of the story element type things, so I think I'm just gonna call it here, because this real... Those purple ones move lightning fast. Because this really is plain as I remember it, so... Yeah, that's Crusher, again. We've probably seen, like, several versions of this by this point. It still seems to play about as expected, so... There you go. And then after that, we ended up with a failed dig from Cleverly Blonde. DOS Games backslash Arcade 2 backslash Gopher. And normally this would be an auto-fail, as in you guys wouldn't even know this happened. But I wanted to show this one because... It, well... Or wait a minute, it says here that this requires Windows 3.0 and above? Wait, is this not, not a DOS program? Oh wait, we've already seen this. Why is there a copy of this Windows game in the DOS games folder? That's just bizarre. The Cleverly Blonde successful dig today is DOS games backslash arcade 2 backslash saucer. Ooh boy, I think I know what this is. And the fact that there's a tommies.doc kind of reinforces that idea. Okay, so... I've briefly mentioned Tommy's software before, or Tom, Tommy's... What? <laughs> what am I talking about? Well, let's just go into the Tommy's.doc here, because we'll see... Tommy's Toys, right. I knew I was getting that wrong. So yeah, the whole notion of Tommy's Toys being these really small games that can not only play themselves, but there's like over a hundred of them, right? Well, the th reason why I recognize this one is because this is one I act 
actually had as a kid. <laughs> it's like one of the few Tommy's Toys games I had. In fact, I think I only had like a couple of them. So yeah, this one I believe is called Tommy's Saucer. So let's edit saucer.doc, see if I'm right about that. Yeah, it says right here, Tommy's Saucer, copyright 86, Tommy's Toys. One day, an alien saucer crash-landed in Tommy's backyard. While helping them repair it, Tommy secretly made a copy of the cockpit operator's manual. After they left, he was playing around and constructed this mock-up of the ship. So, yeah, the idea is you're basically, it's basically like one of those old, um, those old first-person shooting games, like the really old ones, where you just have something come on screen and you have to put your target over it and fire at it. Successive firings of the same, on the same enemy saucer accumulate the energy and increase the likelihood of destruction, but once you break lock, you must start over. But then there's also something here called glinch panting. <laughs> so, function keys F7 and F8 control the glinch panting subsystem. Good luck figuring out how to use it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to, because if I remember, I never did. <laughs> Also, I like how it says here, the ship's energy source is unfathomable, hence its value is not displayed numerically. <laughs> I mean, we have the ability to show or, or at least conceptualize really large numbers. Like, it's called scientific notation. It's where you have your raw number, which has a decimal behind it usually, but then also to the nth power. So if it's like, say, 15 to the 10th power means there's like 10 zeros behind it, right? Oh, and it also says here that the energy source restores at an exponential rate. So you want to actually keep your energy values high, otherwise it can take much longer for them to restore. So that's probably a good thing to keep in mind. Okay, so let's actually show you this thing and prepare your ears because just like most Tommy's toys, there's a lot of sound effects going on with the PC speaker. Okay, that didn't really do much for us. Anyways, difficulty level. Let's start at one. And here we are. We're in our cockpit. <laughs> and it's act I actually notice it's automatically playing right now. So yeah, that's supposed to be like alien text showing up at the bottom. As I was saying before, one of the common things with Tommy's Toys games is that they all have an automatic play mode. So you basically just watch the computer play the game. So I don't even have to touch anything. I can just let the computer play it. Because really, that this is... this What you see is what you get right now. <laughs> so I know a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense looking at it, but the funny thing is is that there's not a lot of sense to make out of this one. So most of the stuff you see on screen right now really is completely pointless. So you have like a time indicator showing how long we've been playing for. You got a speed indicator showing how fast we're going. Then we got a bearing, which indicates like just where we're looking, I guess. We got our shields and we got our beam energy. We use beam energy to fire at the enemies. We got shields which protect us from their shots. Occasionally you see like alien texts show up at the bottom there, but that doesn't mean anything. Like there's a lot of stuff on the screen here which really is just for show and isn't that important. Like we got a bigger enemy here now, so we're like firing our ray beams at him and finally got him. And then our shields restore over time, it's like... Yeah, that's um... It's pretty straightforward once you realize most of what's on the screen is pointless. <laughs> But I guess I could try to take manual control, so to do that, I hit the F1 key. So there, now I'm on manual mode. So let's try to move in to this thing over here. We need to hit F9 or F10 for our ray beam. So we got a lock on. There we go. Okay, we only got one shot in. And the enemy kind of got away from us. So yeah, it's actually really hard to control this. The computer automatic play makes this go look a lot easier than it actually is. Yeah, it's actually really hard to get the crosshair to go over top of the enemies because it doesn't move very um, consistently. And the other thing too is that you can't really move it diagonally. Like if I push a diagonal on the numeric keypad, it doesn't do anything. Hey, I think I got one, <laughs> finally. Hey, I got another one. Okay, so I'm actually managing to defeat enemies. 
<laughs> not easily, that's for sure. So there's that whole glint thing. Like, we've got a key f or a glinch thing. Like, I think that's the um, F7 or F8 keys. So I just activated it, but it doesn't seem to do much of anything. There's also a command down there that says instras. I think that's the instructions. Yeah, it's the instructions. So you don't actually have to read the text file directly. You can just go into here and read it from there. See, so yeah, I put it back on demo mode because the computer's doing a heck of a lot better at fighting these aliens than I was. Especially since it actually understands how to control its speed, whereas I'm guessing there's a button for it, but it's not listed on the functions at the bottom, so... And you know, because we're looking at this game right now, I feel I should point out that I actually have a game idea that's like this, believe it or not. In fact, I could, I'm gonna put a, screen sh a conceptual screenshot on screen right now of this idea of mine, which I've shared online before because I'm probably never gonna make it. But it's a little more coherent compared to this. <laughs> But yeah, that's Tommy Saucer. It's basically just line up the crosshairs and fire things and hope you get some points. It's the bare minimum of a game, even though it looks a lot more crazy. <laughs> yeah, this game, this game has a lot going on on screen for how little gameplay there actually is. And our last take for today from Paul Cheer is win games backslash unclassified backslash Wes. Well, let's see what we got here, because I have no clue what this is going to be. Wes. So we got a help file, we got our wesread.txt, so that's going to be our readme. We got the executable itself, so let's see what the readme says. Thank you for evaluating Win Elvis in space. Haven't we seen something like this before? If we did, it was a while back, because I've heard the name. I know I've heard the name. And apparently from a BFM software, or Brett McDonald software, I'm guessing the F is probably his middle name, or middle initial. And apparently whatever this game is, it's $15 for register. Okay, and what's the help file say? Alright, you know, here's the thing. Looking at this little, um, or whoops, um, yeah, looking at this little screen here, this doesn't look familiar. Like, maybe we... Maybe we haven't come across this yet. Like, we've come across Elvis-related things before, but it's possible that we haven't actually seen this game itself yet, but I have heard of it. So, you know what, let's just go into it. Let's go into it. So, when Elvis in Space, release 1.0, April 93, and this shareware program, you may use it free for 15 days. Ooh, only 15, huh? You are not registered. A 12-minute demo of when Elvis in Space started. Please register. Okay, so we're only allowed to play for 12 minutes, huh? Well, I guess we better make the most of it. So, <laughs> here's the registration thing. So, we would like to inform you that Elvis is definitely still alive. That's right, he didn't fake his own death, nor was he drugged by a jealous husband whose wife is a walking, talking Pris Priscilla wannabe doll? What? Anyways, um, Elvis did not overdose on little green pills either. Rather, he was taken from us by little green creatures most commonly known as aliens. Elvis has been kidnapped by aliens! Yes, it's sad, so very sad, but true. Okay, calm down, don't get your pelvis in an uproar. It's important that you stay collected. You're going to play a crucial role in the mission of bringing Elvis home, but we will explain that to you later. How can this be true? Okay, this is birdied into our 12 minutes, I imagine, so, okay. Let's just go to the gameplay. So does this maximize? Oh wow, it actually does maximize. Okay, actual effort. So... That didn't stay on screen long enough for me to see all of it. Uh, can I get it back? This thing? Okay, there we go. The little question mark exclamation thing next to the help button brings these back up. So click left mouse button on a location to move. So click left mouse button on an object to bring up action menu. Watch for messages on the messages bar at the bottom of the window. Keyboard accelerators are listed for... Ex accelerators? You mean shortcuts. <laughs> Systems change to red to indicate damage. Lasers must recharge before being fire. So it says here, a color code is used to determine the contents of a sector. The colors of the bottom of the window match the buttons. Okay, so we're basically going to different sectors trying to do something. 
So this yellow set indicates that there's a planet here. Um, can we do a scan? Okay, we can do a scan. So H dig. I don't know what that means. Probably maybe a bad guy of some kind. There's also a rock in this sector. So if we actually like go to a sector, okay, we get a neat little effect. Okay, and we got an enemy. So can we fire our pulse laser? We can indeed. So can we fire a missile? And also get away from this thing before it gets too close? Oh, we actually destroyed it. We do not move very fast at all. <laughs> oh, we can actually set like which systems we want to prioritize and stuff. So that's neat. Okay, so let's f go fight another. Um, oh, we have to go in, can't go in eight directions. It's four way movement. So here's a sector with a rock. Oh, we gotta destroy the rock? I guess so. Okay, so set a heading. Let's try launching an attack drone. And are we close enough for the pulse lasers? We are not. Oh, our attack drone's actually destroying its attacks. Well, trying to. Or actually, can we fire pulse lasers at the... Oh, we can. So I'm gonna fire a missile at the thing up there. Oh, but it looks like my missile in collided with one of his attacks. Um, so use our pulse lasers to get rid of another one of the attacks there. There's actually some complexity to this. So is our missile gonna make contact? Are we gonna blow it up? No. Might not have. Oh, we did do some damage to it. Okay. So. Oh, I see. It's apparently this is a rock and roll ship or something. Yeah, I took took a hit from one of these. Oh, we actually destroyed the the rock and roll ship. Following relic was found in the wreckage of the destroyed ship. Black velvet painting. Good for that. Let's actually get out of get out of here before we get destroyed by those things. And can we actually go back and recover our drone? Or no, the hyperdrive engines are cooling down. So, uh, that kind of makes sense, because you don't want to be able to just jump rapidly. But... Nope, our attack drone is now completely lost. Oh well. Okay, so we're going to defeat another one of these guys, so fire a missile. And then set a heading. Aw, I destroyed the missile. Well, let's launch another missile then. Well, at least our attack drone's in range now. Let's fire one more missile. Oh, we're actually in range of his own attacks. In that case, are we within pulse laser range? We are. Ooh, and our missile hit. That's gonna take it out. And apparently we found a Fendor guitar in the in the wreckage. Okay, this time let's actually get our drone back before we jump out of the sector. There we go. So can we do anything at the planet? Or... I really don't like the fact that we move, like, stupidly slow. Like, I get that that's kind of a strategic thing going on here. Because this is kind of taking after those old, um, Star Trek strategic games that we were pretty common on computer systems. But this is kind of slow. I mean, it should be slow if you're going to be strategic, but not this slow. Like, maybe like twice this speed would have been better. Especially since we're eating through our 12-minute limit. We don't even know what our lim where we are in that sort of demo limit, so... Can we scan the planet? No, it's Earth. Um, do I have any options? Like... Orbit. Why are you back here? You don't have Elvis, so you won't get clearance to land. You need to find Elvis and bring him back to Earth. Ah, oh, darn. But I want my- I need, I need more missiles. Apparently we can hail a supply ship. Um, oh, there's a supply ship. So let's set heading for the supply ship. Are we gonna get to resupply before we run out of time? I think we've only got like two minutes left, based on how long my recording's been going for. Okay, are we close enough to dock? We are. Supplies transferred. Excellent. We were able to resupply. So I guess now we should probably head a sector over. 
because we're going to run out of time real soon. So let's do... Oh, can I not do a scan anymore? Didn't I have an option to, like, scan the area around me, but now I can't? Oh, wait, there it is. Strategic controls. Oh, we do have a game status screen. So apparently the alien ships are hound dogs, rock and rolls, and heartbreakers. Huh. Oh, and we only have limited resupplies. That's good to know. Oh, and there is a game timer. Uh, apparently we've only got, like, one minute left. <laughs> well, that's not going to go very far. And we can also see the icons for the inventory items we've collected. Yeah, we're not going to be able to destroy one of those in time. So I might as well just let the time run out. So that was Win Elvis in Space. That's actually... This is actually pretty decent. Like, it maximized properly, the graphics are scaled properly, the movement of the ships is really slow, but that's not really that bad a thing, like, as long as you're patient. Like, it'd be it's worse to be too fast than too slow, generally speaking. But, yeah, for, for the price, like, this was only $15 they were charging, right? So that's fairly decent for what looks like a pretty competent game here. And yeah, you're not registered. Demo is over. Please register. Share where authors need the money to develop new products. I'll have to see if this person actually did anything else other than this one.